Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. So this is a tricky one. Um, my hint to you is I'm doing it because my calculus three class, my multivariable calculus class is studying double integrals over polar regions. So that's the approach that I'm going to take in order to evaluate this. There's several different ways you could do this integral. So you might be saying, all right, Professor V, if you want to do, you know, a polar integral, then you need a double integral over a region. And so I have to introduce a double integral when I only have this improper integral with respect to one variable. So what I'm going to do is say, let's consider, let's just consider the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx squared. All right. So what does it mean exactly if I were to square that integral? Basically, I have it multiplied by itself twice. Yes? Yes. Okay, great. Now, I'm going to change one of the variables here in my integral to be all in terms of y. And I'm not changing the nature of what's going on, right? Your variable is really just a choice for you so long as... The variable in the exponent of e matches the variable of the differential. Everything's representing the same thing. So I'm going to switch this one to e to the negative y squared dy. Are we all right? Okay, so now I can rewrite this actually as a double integral from negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. I have e to the negative x squared times e to the negative y squared very good, dy dx or dx dy. And the importance here is we can simplify a little bit, yes. So we've got negative infinity to infinity, negative infinity to infinity, e to the negative x squared minus y squared dy dx. And I want you to notice something important. These limits of integration here, right, are in the xy plane and they represent all of R2, the entire two-dimensional coordinate system here. So all of R2 would be everything in the xy plane. And notice here, right, we're integrating from negative infinity to negative infinity for both variables. So I can just rewrite this as general dA. dy dx or dx dy, it's equivalent to dA. So say I were to want to convert to a polar coordinate system. Well, we know in polar coordinates, dA is represented by R dr d theta, and then x squared plus y squared is r squared. So then now my integrand would become e to the negative r squared. But what would be the appropriate limits of integration in a polar coordinate system to represent all of r2? Well, your limits for theta would have to go all the way around, everything, everything, so 0 to 2 pi. And then what about limits for r? Well, r will go from 0 to some arbitrary constant a, and I'm going to let a approach infinity. That way I'll be able to span all of r2 here. So my limits of integration are as follows. Oop. I have the limit as a approaches infinity, and then we'll go 0 to 2 pi and 0 to a. How are we doing? Okay, so that's the big sneaky or important maneuver here in evaluating this integral because hopefully now you're spotting the fact that dA in polar is r dr d theta. Picking up this extra r enables us to actually evaluate this integral very easily. So from here, we have limit a goes to infinity. Now notice I have no thetas, right, appearing in my integral at all. So if I integrate with respect to theta, 0 to 2 pi, I'm just going to pick up a theta, 2 pi minus 0. I teach my class this shortcut all the time. You could just slap a 2 pi out there. And then you have 0 to a e to the negative r squared times r dr. And then from here, if you're going to go ahead and do a u substitution, you need to change your limits of integration and use proper notation. I'm just going to do it in my head. So if I were to substitute u to be negative r squared, du would be negative 2 r dr. So I'm going to pick up a negative 1 half in the antiderivative. Okay, no problem. So I've got limit, a approaches infinity, we've got this 2 pi hanging out, a negative 1 half, e to the negative r squared, and then that's going to get evaluated from 0 to a. All right, 
So let's evaluate the limit and see what we get. So limit A approaches infinity. This is just going to give me negative pi. And then I have e to the negative a squared minus e to the zero. All right, I recommend when you're evaluating limits, rewrite your negative exponents in the denominator. It just makes it easier to visualize what's going on. So this is one over e to the a squared minus one. So a is approaching infinity. e to the a squared would also be approaching infinity. So one over something getting large goes to zero, exactly. So then I'm just left with negative pi times negative one, which is positive pi. So what does that tell me? Well, I just showed that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx squared is pi, right? So the original integral that we had, negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx is equal to the square root of pi. And there you have it. All right. Now, like I said, there's several different ways to evaluate this integral. Um, I took this approach because it was relevant for the course I'm teaching right now, multivariable calculus, and I wanted to do something that my students could appreciate while they're in that class since we're studying polar integrals right now. Anyhow, anyways, comment down below if you were able to get it on your own. If you took a totally different approach, I'd love to hear what it was. I know a lot of it is probably beyond what we teach at the college that I work at, but it's still lovely to hear. And as always, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned for lots more interesting calc videos and content coming your way. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok too, you guys. Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye!